pregame.tv. Welcome back to pregame.tv. I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. One of these weeks, I'm going to slip uh, you know, some money to bury in the <laughs> production booth, and I'm going to tell them, start the camera early, <laughs> but do your normal countdown and let you guys see what this guy does <laughs> as we're leading in and we're going That's from right. black into the screen. We're, right. we're gonna, I'm going to fix my buddy, Ken. You're most never going to know there, Most of you out there deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We're here. Pregame.tv. We're looking at Saturday NBA action. He's Ken Thompson. I'm Marco D'Angelo. We're looking San Antonio at Dallas. Ken, what the hell happened to the Spurs in game two? No, even more. Who the hell is this Dallas team? I mean, <laughs> they know who these guys are. And it started with the last game of the season. Remember, they lose by one point trying to get that seven seed against Memphis in Memphis. And right there, I was like, wow, they're playing pretty darn good in this game. Yeah. Lo and behold, they had a chance to win it. And then game one, I mean, you would figure after they blow that game, get out scored 14 nothing or whatever it was down the stretch, and San Antonio wins it by five. You still got the money with Dallas, but you're figuring, ah, there's no way Dallas can. How do you go back to practice knowing that you had that split that you're looking for? They go and they freaking dominate it. I mean, they win by 21 points. And that's why Nowitzki came out and said, hey, you know what? We're kind of relaxed here. We play better on the road. We're not stressing. And, and I'll tell you what, when you have an owner like Mark Cuban, and he's a great guy as far as he's there with the money, he's a, but he's passionate. He wants to win. And so when he's sitting right behind the bench, it's got to kind of like give you the heebie-jeebies, man. I mean, <laughs> if, you're, if you're struggling, you know, I mean, but uh, so maybe that's why they feel they can relax a little bit more on the road. So we'll see how much of a home court advantage it is. I know they'll be up for it in Big D. Last night was a great Dallas parlay. You had the Mavericks and the Stars, and there were some people there at Legacy Stadium. They were just, they were Dallas fans. They were partying big time last night. Yeah, it's always a great uh, scene at uh, Lagazi Stadium, and I, we, I was there Monday night with you, and I, it was loud where oh, we yeah. were doing our the show, and you know we're trying to do the show, and then you know goals are happening, and you know the Clipper game, there wasn't a lot of screaming and yelling going in that one on Monday night because that was the 40 point blowout game. But yeah, there was the some... screaming we were hearing were from the sports book directors that were losing their ass on that one <laughs> because everyone had the Clippers in the over. Yeah, absolutely, Ken. I look at what happened in game two, and clearly Dallas was the team with the sense of urgency. They out-hustled the Spurs in every aspect of the game. Um, what was uncharacteristic about the Spurs' performance, especially for a Popovich team, mm -hmm. they were sloppy with the basketball. This is a team that averaged 14 turnovers per game during the regular season. Last night, they had, and we're taping on Thursday, last night they had... 15 turnovers and there was still three minutes left in the first half crazy that's not San Antonio basketball and because of all those turnovers the difference in the game uh, you look well, one of the things is San Antonio uncharacteristically they were very poor from the foul line last night they uh, 11 they missed 11 foul shots in the game you can't do that you know that's something Dwight Howard does and Dallas you know, missed too I think yeah, yeah but the other point was Dallas got off they shot about the same percentage from the field. So if you just looked at the raw numbers and didn't like do a deeper look, say, wow, you know, they shot both teams shot about the same percentage. Three point goals weren't no, that much. Three point goals was eight, eight for twenty one for Dallas, but yeah. ten of twenty yeah. for San Antonio, fifty percent. So you're thinking, like, well, how they, you know, how did they get blown out? But then you look, Dallas took twenty eight more shots than Incredible. San Antonio did Incredible. in the game. You know, and again, that when you turn the ball over as many times as the Spurs did, I think they ended up with like 24 turnovers for the game. That's going to do it. And uh, that was the difference in the ball game. And Dallas heads back to Big D 1 1. I think Popovich, next time they try to give him a coach of the year award before a game, is going to tell him, look, stick this thing up your. <laughs> and give it to me at the end of the season after I win a championship. All right. Well, speaking of championships, this is your free play. Yeah, it is. Let's make it official. All right, pal. And I'll tell you what, I, I don't know which way to go on this game because 
I know San Antonio is good enough to go to Dallas and win, and I don't think it's that distinct a home court advantage. And we know the success prior to the series that San Antonio has had with Dallas head to head. So I'm looking for some points. 113.92 was the uh, score yesterday, and I think San Antonio is going to up their game. In fact, I'm looking for them to get off in the first quarter. Now, we've watched them the first two games. They get off in the first quarter, but only the first seven minutes of the first quarter. They get a double-digit lead both games, and then they let Dallas come back, and Dallas actually ends up taking the lead in both those games. I think this time San Antonio realizes, hey, we better get it together. We're not even going to get out of the first round. I think there's going to be a lot of points in this game. I think this game's going to hit 217, 220, and I think it'll go well over. But when you look at the uh, the balance, yeah, I mean, Kawhi Leonard really struggled. Mano Ginobili, he came to play, the only one really knocking down three-pointers there with consistency. Bellinelli may get some more time. Now, he played 27 minutes, but I think he may take some more shots when he's out there and, uh, you know, Tony Parker's igniting things. I mean, they can they can score from the outside. Duncan's got to be a little bit more efficient down low inside the paint. Nowitzki's been solid. Tell you what, Devin Harris has been playing lights out, too. I like the way he's playing. And Monte Ellis, another guy that we know he can shoot it. And I think on the home court, he's going to get it done. I'm looking for a lot of three-pointers. We talked about 18 going down in game two between the two teams. I think you're going to get more like 25 going down in this game. I'm looking for this game one way or the other, looking somewhere around 110, 107, somewhere in that neighborhood. And, again, I don't have a winner in this. That's why I said, you know what, I'll root for both teams. Just give me the over. Marco D., that's the way I'm going. All right, great stuff from Ken. We've got one more video left. We're going to go Sunday action. Yes, we're going to go baseball. We're going to take a look at Boston at Toronto up next here on pregame.tv.